There is no question that sewing has been historically dubbed as women's work. Sewing was and is a tedious task, previously only suited for those who stayed close to the home as part of the woman's task load. Sewing and embroidery has been used both functionally and metaphorically as a method in repairing items. The act of sewing has a recognizable place in the history of sustaining the elements, but also as an element itself. Sewing is rhythmic, meditative, and approachable for those of all cultures and skill levels. Sewing is really drawing and sometimes gluing and collaging with the needle and thread. There really are no rules in how to sew, but there are best practices and traditional methods in allowing certain stitches to function correctly. In this video, I will demonstrate only a small handful of both utility and aesthetic stitches. All require simple materials, time, and patience. Let's get started. The reason for never throwing out works on paper is exactly for projects like this. This was a not so successful monotype in one of the earlier videos. Really, it is possible to sew any and most superficial items together. It mainly comes down to pre-poking needle holes and the weight of sewing material one uses. While it is possible to sew cardboard panels together, one will not have luck with silk thread to do so. While it is possible to sew a butterfly wing to a piece of kitakata, one will not have luck using 30 weight embroidery floss and a giant needle. Other than a needle and thread, a few other tools that I found helpful to have are a pencil and eraser, a ruler, a scribe, bookbinders all, or something with a sharp point for pre-poking holes, and a pincushion. To do any of the stitches, you will need to thread the needle. You can use one or more strands through the eye of the needle. However, the more strands you want to use, the larger the needle eye will need to be. Once your strands are through, tie a knot at the end of the thread length. In most of the hand sewing on paper I've done, I've had the best luck in pre-poking holes. This is something that is customarily done in book arts. It also makes it easier to bring a thread in from the back side of the papers without stabbing and guessing. You can use a ruler to do this or do it freehand. It isn't necessary to poke hard, rather just make the tip of the awl or scribe go through the paper or layers of paper as a guide. The running stitch is probably the most basic of all of the stitches. In all honesty, it doesn't hold things together all that well if the stitches are long and far apart. Begin by inserting your needle in the first hole from the back side to the front of the paper, gently pulling up. Pull all of the thread through until you stop at the knot and then send the needle down through the next hole towards the back in the same fashion. Think of a dolphin swimming in and out of the water, going up and down, creating a dotted line of dashes. Remember, if your holes were poked far apart, your dashes will be longer.
For this example, I used the running stitch for aesthetic reasons, as it was done on a single piece of paper. In cases like these, I enjoy what happens texturally with repetitive rows of the stashed pattern as opposed to one line. To use the running stitch as a way of sewing two things together, I start by temporarily taping the shape in place while I pre-poke holes in both layers of paper. To begin the stitch, come from the back side of the paper to the front as usual. It may be easier to come up through one layer of paper and then go down through the two layers, but things like this you will discover for yourself as you work. Instead of moving forward through the holes as previously shown, your stitches will make a lateral bridge on top of the two layers of paper you are stitching together. Keep in mind, the closer the sets of holes were made together, the better the two items will hold in place. It is possible to punch additional holes once you get going, or do a second round of holes, perhaps in a different color, in between the first set after you finish. Once you are finished, you will need to create a tight knot to prevent the thread from unraveling. When you come to the last of the holes, know that you will want to tie the knot off in the back, not in the front of the piece, unless for aesthetic reasons. Unofficially, one can do a number of things, including catching the needle with the previous thread and tying a knot. or going through just the back of the paper, leaving a small loop before pulling through, coming back through and swooping the needle through the loop to tie it off. If you do this, I recommend separating the two strands and tying them together a few times for an extra measure. The next stitch is called a blanket stitch. A blanket stitch is typically a stitch done on an edge to make sure it looks finished and have a steady hold. As usual, I would recommend pre-poking holes. In this case, 
I used a ruler to ensure I had a straight line. Blanket stitches look best when they are carefully measured out, both in length and in depth, and made to be straight. Begin by inserting the needle from the back of the papers to the front. This will always hide your knot. One can also insert the needle into the back of the top paper to hide it as well. It may also be worth mentioning to stitch from left to right if you are right-handed, the opposite if you are left-handed. In this stitch, you will always enter from the back, leaving a loop, and then push your needle through and pull the thread perpendicular to the stitch. So again, we come in from the back side, pull it, not all the way, and leave a loop. Come in through the front side with the needle and pull the string perpendicular to the stitch. The back stitch is the stronger and more fluid cousin of the running stitch. It can be used as an aesthetic mark or as a means of holding two or more items in place. To begin, I pre-draw my path in pencil on which I will pre-poke my holes. Once the holes are made, I will carefully erase the pencil line. The closer the holes are together, the more fluid and strong the sewn line will be. Begin by inserting the needle from the back side to the front. Once the thread is through and stops at the back of the knot, go back through on the next hole from the front to the back. Next, come up through the third hole from the back to the front. Instead of moving forward like the running stitch, go back through the previous hole to showcase the thread on the front of the paper. Like I said, it is just like the running stitch, only instead of continually advancing with the stitches, you need to step backwards to create a fluid line. A French knot is a decorative stitch and sometimes a utility stitch to create a small knot or dot on the surface of the material. The process can be repeated until the desired number of knots are produced.
Okay, here it is again. Begin by inserting a threaded needle through a single poked hole from the back to the front of the material. Once you have pulled the thread through, stopping at the back knot, wrap the thread from back to front three times around the needle. Holding the thread taut with your left hand, reinsert the needle into the original hole or nearby hole. Pull the needle down from the back, keeping a steady hand on the top thread. Hold tightly in place until the loop is almost through, creating a top knot on the paper's surface. Cross stitch in general has gotten a bad rap over the last century or two. Things have certainly shifted in terms of materials, patterns, and acceptable imagery. Cross stitch, no longer sported by 80 year old cat ladies, is the new sedentary sport. Cross stitch is a form of embroidery and sewing in which X shaped stitches in a tiled like pattern are used to form a picture or design. The traditional X pattern made with cross stitch is as follows. Starting in the lower left hand corner from the back to the front of the material, push the needle up and pull the string all the way through. Next, stick the needle in the top right hand corner from the front to the back. Pull this all the way through. Third, push the needle from the back to the front in the lower right hand corner pull through. And last, insert the needle from the top through to the back side in the upper left hand corner. Repeat to continue pattern. Note all holes should be pre-poked to ensure straight marks and less confusion. A satin stitch is an embroidery technique in which the stitches work close together in long parallel rows. They are used to fill in all or part of the design with long expanses of the same color or a panel of shifting color by changing the thread periodically. Begin by inserting a needle and thread from the back to the front as usual. Pull the thread all the way through. Next, insert the needle back into the material, covering as much area as you want. This distance could be any length, really. Just remember that your stitches need to be kept somewhat taut during this process, or your stitches will relax and fall out of shape.
With the thread coming out of the back, insert the needle back through to the front next to where it came out of. With the satin stitch, I recommend using a very thin needle to prevent unnecessary girth of holes. In addition, I typically do not pre-poke holes. This allows me the freedom to get as close as I can to the previous hole. Instead, I outline the back and the front of my material with the same outline that I will follow for my satin stitch area.